But it is a lesson, a lesson that set aside. Speaking to the next generation, I emphasize for you to carry the weight, you need I to exercise your mother's song. As a teenager having conversations with my grandmother, I'd try to speak in my mother tongue. And I remember vividly, you know, me trying to say something and struggling with it, stumbling over the words, you know. And my grandmother would laugh. Not like making fun of me kind of laugh, but like a cute kind of laugh, like, ah, oh, you know, that's kind of cute. Like, and I'd be like, what, what did I, you know, am I saying it right, am I saying it wrong? And she'd kind of coach me, but she'd laugh back. And there was a sense of, you know, uh, in me, a feeling of, oh yeah, that's my grandma, you know, like that love you have for your grandmother. But at the same time, a sense of shame. A sense of shame from not being able to communicate what I wanted to communicate. So you play around with the sample to try yep. and find something that works? Most of the time it's like playing with all these ideas, but it's it's often just finding the simplest thing that's yeah. just going to make it feel good. Like, it just feels nice. Mm. And not trying to complicate it too much. It's been nine years, nine years this month since grandmother passed away and the impact that she had not just on me but the entire family was huge right um, I got a big family I got you know a lot of cousins a lot of um, you know aunties and uncles and my grandma was the glue I remember you know as a kid coming up, the conversations we would have, just the way she would laugh, the way she would smile, the way she would bring, you know, that grandmotherly love, the only way a grandmother can, into any room. I don't want to lose you. I don't want to lose you. Cause you mean too much. Said you mean too much. Hey. Yeah. I grew up in a non-English speaking household. English was a second language, you know? And so Punjabi came to me naturally as a kid. When I was four, five, six, seven, the Sikh community would run like Punjabi language competitions for kids. I got pictures standing on podiums, you know? Like I'm come second or I come first and a sense of pride around you know, at age four, five, six, seven, like, yeah, man, I, I speak my language well. And over time, that pride dim gets diminished. You know, brought up in a country that, you know, where English is the main language, you know, inevitably you're gonna pick up both, you know, there's, there's nothing wrong with that, but this is a country that also has this mentality, if you've gotta assimilate, you have to integrate, you have to, but, you know, not even from a standpoint of like, you both cultures are equal, there's a colonized mentality uh, that permeates through this country. Your language doesn't get treated with reverence in the same way. If anything, it gets made fun of. So as a kid, man, it's like you speak the language, it's cool, but then some other kids or other parents or whatever looking at you like, what's wrong with you? You know, it's like, man, you feel like you have to abandon it in order to fit in, in order to appease or to be a part of where you are, to be fully accepted. Yeah, yeah no, I feel, I feel, I feel. Cool. Should I do one more and that way we've got two to choose from in that in that verse for the spaces? Uh, sure. Cool. I might run you just on the verse then. Okay. Yeah, just the verse. I'm 
I grew up in a, in, a, in a household where, you know, a non-English speaking household, English was a second language, you know. And so Punjabi came to me naturally as a kid. But as a teenager, early teenager, I lost my fluency. And now I know different. Now it's like, and what? That's my language, you know. And it's valuable to me, and not just to me, but to the world, to have that language in existence. Now I'm at a point where I'm relearning my language. I feel like my ancestors are trying to speak to me. And the only way they're going to listen is if I speak back in the mother tongue. So I'm trying to relearn, because I know the value of it. Uh, and no one could take that from me. Once you know the value of something, no one could take it from you. Uh, if you keep it close to you.